Hello and welcome back to another installment of the Nation News Touchline Report. I am Nick Maitland and we are still very excited and very happy that local football action has returned to these lovely shores. Today I am joined by a good colleague, a good workmate, Anmar Goodridge Boyce, as well as we are in winner's role with Mr. Daniel Rowe. He is a player and a coach of two teams in the Republic Cup and the Women's Super League. So I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to hand it over to these two young men first. And Margaret Riz Boyce, you would have covered the games over this weekend. What do you think of this weekend's action in the Republic Cup and the Women's Super League? Yeah, thank you so much for having me again, Nick. And welcome, Daniel, to the show. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, I was stationed this week. I traded Spikestone mm -hmm. to go to Holder. So, so the two matches there, Fitz Village beating Greens 4-2. And then the night cap at 8 p.m., potential bowlers, 4-1 winners over Mavericks. Mm -hmm. So those were the two encounters that I covered this week. Um, but good football in the end. I, I watched a good few matches and I think it's a case now where the quality of the football is growing mm -hmm. as the weeks progress. I know this is only the second week of the Republic Cup, but I can say that we're definitely seeing a better quality version of play. Um, teams definitely now adapting the style that they want to encroach on a number of players. So definitely good to see the highlight of my coverage this weekend though is the potential ballers the 4-1 win over mavericks mm -hmm. a very good game um it was a bit close in the early stages but then potential ballers once they got the lead um, went on to, to prevail over mavericks mavericks started very good mm -hmm. um some nice passing nice build-up play definitely a good style it is a very young team a number of players would have played for the Mavericks team and the Barbados team in terms of the junior level, in okay. terms of football. Mm -hmm. But we're now seeing some of those players now stepping up to the plate. Obviously, we lost a couple of years in terms of football with the pandemic. Yeah. So a number of the players now transitioning from junior football into senior football. So now we're you know, kind of seeing them, um, what we would call as big man football, <laughs> kind of seeing them on that stage now. Damar Linton, he mm -hmm. stood out for me. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the former Paradise man, starve of playing time at Paradise for the last BFA Premier League. Mm -hmm. So he's now switched to potential ballers. I understand that the two clubs are pretty close. So it's not much in terms of, you know, um, going ahead yeah. in terms of the two clubs. So, you know, he switched and he looked a new player, um, scoring two goals mm -hmm. on the night. And one was a top goal. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the second goal, the first goal, his first goal on the night, um, I'll describe it for you, Nick. Mm -hmm. So it was a throw-in and he took the control on his chest. And with that one touch, he took two defenders away and then just slammed the right foot volley into the back of the net. <laughs> the crowd was screaming. There's a goal we should have caught on camera. Yeah, uh, I, I, I apologize that we didn't get it on camera. Nick. It's, <laughs> blame. it's my fault. Blame ATV for not catching that one on camera. It's my but, fault. Um, you mentioned that the, the, the style of play has really increased. We're not yeah. seeing the big score lines that we saw in the first yeah. week. Rather, the games are a little closer and guys are now showing their their quality we expected that as well Nick. we expected of course yeah, of expected. course and as teams train and get fitter probably more well better performances for sure uh, we will see those i want to switch over to mr Rowe over here um he would have played in the tournament as a player last week and he would have coached um this week as well he's well standing coach but coach nonetheless so daniel thanks for being here with us last week you played who you played for Last week, well, I wish I would have played last week, mm. but I've, I've been out with an injury for the last well, seven, eight weeks now. Mm. Uh, so I would have missed UE. I've just playing for UE, so I missed UE's first encounter, and the boys did an amazing job. Mm. Uh, I think they put uh, coaches Messiah and Cracker Goddard, they put their tactics um, to work, and I think there, there's still some things they need to fine tune, but they came up with a, a very impressive 5 0 win. Like you guys said, the score lines were pretty good, uh, pretty big uh, in in the first yeah, week. Were, As I think, I think uh, a lot of the younger and newer teams found their feet. Mm -hmm. So you know, you, you haven't played any football since you know 2018. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you you get a lot of players who you you come in this tournament now at 18 years old. The last football you would have played, you would have been 15. Yeah. You know, so football boy football yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a lot of them are now finding their feet now, now seeing what it's like to play. And I gotta say, I was really impressed with. Um, how a lot of the o a lot of the more experienced teams mm -hmm. were able to exert their dominance, so they they weren't um, as lackadaisical as as you know 
some may have expected. They took they took their chance and beat what was in front of them. Uh, I think UE was UE did that very well. Um, my first game is should be on Sunday. We're mm-hmm. playing uh, at Spike Stone. Um, Spike Stone. Yeah, yeah, Spike Stone. Not too far for me. No, 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 no. <laughs> AGB. Not too far for me. But I'll be there. So, I'll be there. I'll be there. September September 11th at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Uh, UE versus Youth Milan, which will be a pretty good game. Yeah, uh, Youth Milan's first game. division team. Yep. Um, a few Youth Milan players have come across to to UE, so there'll be a little rivalry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm look. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. I, I'm working very hard with Sean L from Sports Therapy 101 mm-hmm. um, to 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 be ready in time for that game. Um, on the flip. Uh, I've been coaching at Kickstart for the last Great segment, uh, yeah. couple <laughs> for the last couple of months, mm-hmm. and the coach Arantes Lawrence had to had to leave um, uh, this last game. Yes, yesterday, well, Sunday, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I gotta say, I took over, and I think he's also done a very good job with those girls. Um, I got a big congratulations to them. They came, they worked really, really hard, and they got the one 0 win over Pinelands, who I also must congratulate because mm-hmm. that's a very young team. Very young team yep. yep, young coaches, Devontae Richards, uh, Samron. Some of those guys have been putting in some great work mm-hmm. over there. Um, and the, the Pineland girls came out and they they fought hard. They fought hard um, two weeks ago against UE, yeah. and they fought hard this week again against Kickstar, and it was a pretty even game. And Kickstart came through with the last minute winner. Mm-hmm. Big up to Shante Padmore, yeah. Tiana Bino. Yeah. Cool. yeah, Amber De Silvia. The girls did it. The girls did it. Mm, fantastic stuff. So we touched a little bit on the Sunday games, um, but let's talk about the Saturday games. Let me list off for you the results from Saturday, the 3rd of September um, at Dover. Pinelands beating FC Bides Mill 5 0. Ray Francis had a goal in the 15th minute. Cody Austin as well had two. Demarcus Maloney as well. He scored. And Margot Jordan. Um, Gall Hill and Parish Land. That big Christchurch derby. That ended 3-1 in favor of Gall Hill. Shaquan Jones, Siobhan Trotman and Ramon Rollins for Gall Hill. Renaco Mosley got the goal for Parish Land. At Valerie in Britain's Hill. Britain's Hill beating College Savannah. Listen guys. Britain's Hill 11. College Savannah 1. Ramel Bino with 4 goals. Ngozi Reed with another, Sylvan Wade, Romario Seri, Kishmar Wade, and Jerron Outerson, Dante Greenwich as well. Remember Dante Greenwich? He, he's been a big goal scorer in our Premier League for many Britain years. Hill. Indeed. Colin Savannah also had a goal. You coached him? No, no, I said the coach of Britain Hill, um, mm-hmm. Andre Gill. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. also done a really good job. Mm-hmm. What is Colin Face? Face, yeah. Face. Yeah, face. Yeah. Oh, his face is <laughs> <at my> face. <laughs> interesting. Real interesting nicknames in our Barbadian football. Uh, as well, um, Silver Sands beating Eastern United 6-0. Darren Guilford with five of those goals and Troy Johnson with the other for Silver Sands. At Bell Plain, Youth Milan, they were defeated 3-1 by Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills leaving the city, going all into the country and beating Youth Milan. Um, the goal for Youth Milan was scored by Nicholas Broom and for Beverly Hills was Rico Agard with two and Deshaun Phillips with another. St. Andrew Lions, another big score, 7-0 over Technique. Darico Helmet King, he had two. Jomo Hayward had one. Dario Aline, Shamar Buju Edwards with another goal. Zico Graves and Shakir Skeet. And then at Bridgefield, Carlton beating Whitehall 2-1. Kyle Ford Blades with both goals for Carlton. And then Bagatelle beating Cosmos 3-1. With a penalty kick from Mar Aline, one from Callum Green, and another goal from Marlon Headley. So, pretty balanced scores on Saturday. And I think Saturday was a pretty cool day for our football. AGB, Sunday scores, you have them there? Yeah. I know so, you were all over the place on Sunday. What about the Sunday scores? Yeah, so Sunday, Caribbean United, three, Benfica, nil. Um, Kevin Durant, he scored two. Stefan Moran, he scored one. BSA, Barbados Soccer Academy, they defeated Hustle Turning. Five goals to two. Mm-hmm. Corey Hoyt scoring all five goals for the Barbados Soccer Academy. Oh. That's an outstanding feat. Right, Corey. To, to score mm-hmm. all five goals, you know, in one in one game is fantastic. Kevin Seeley and Mario Phillip, they scored the goals for turning. And then I'm seeing here L and R United four. Chipmont nil. Dario Blackman he scored one. Rico Braffitt uh, scored two. And then. Anderson Crawford, he scored one. Kickstart, 5-1 winners over Doris Road. 
Um, Barry Samuel scored one. Jelani Green, you were at this match, Nick. That's Remy Samuel. Remy Samuel. Yeah, yeah, Remy yeah, yeah, Samuel. That was Remy. a mistake from, from the persons who gave us the, the results. The, results. the goal okay. was Remy a mistake, Samuel. though. The goal was a mistake, was a mistake. <laughs> Remy Samuel. Yeah. What a header. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so it's no, Remy. No, no, no fault of yours. Yeah, Remy. <laughs> Remy. Okay, Remy so Samuel, Remy. I'm yeah. saying Remy here. Mm -hmm. And Luke Humphrey mm -hmm. and Akeem James, the, yeah. the, the other goal scorers. And then, obviously, the match that I covered, potential ballers for Mavericks won. And also in this game, Nick, I spoke to DeMar Linton. And he's loving life um, at Potential Ballers. And I think at this point in time, you know, we'll just have a look at what he had to say. Four one winners um, over Mavericks. Talk to me, how was the game for you, man? Uh, I've been honest, boy. I did OT game for a long, long time. Hardly get to touch the ball this game, but the guys were still able to pull it off, um, keep on the head. And once we get the chances, we was able to take them right through. This is your first game in the Republic Cup, yeah? Yes, first game. Able to get the three points, what's the feeling like? Uh, like I said, I um, feel pretty good. Um, it was a little shaky start, but like I said, the man was able to um, pull it off. And once we get any chances, he was able to capitalize on them and you know, take the game. You scored a fantastic goal for, to make it 2 1. Con chest control and then the right foot volley into the back of the net. Talk to me about that one. How special was it? Uh, it's the only dream book then, there. <laughs> Honestly, it thought it would have been all safe to be honest, but. When I look around and see the ball just going to the top of it, I was like, I can score for two. <laughs> it was a good feeling. I had to take off my shirt. Mm -hmm. And Damar, you, you transferred from Paradise. Talk to me now about that transition. New club, new man. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, Paradise is still like going to me. Um, football I played for a long time, they won't get a feel for saying new. So I just, you know what I mean? Just kind of give guys a hand. Um, that's still like a Paradise team to me too. Always train for Dover. Do the area, pretty sure. So, st still feel like at home at the same time. Well, congratulations and uh, all the best for the rest of the trip. Thank you. Yeah, so some interesting quotes there from, from Damar. He's, he looks a happy player. Um, Nick definitely enjoying his time. It was his debut playing for, for potential, but it just goes to show that, you know, maybe we'll see so much more from this young man. I also spoke to the head coach, Mr. Darren Lane, and we'll have a look at what he had to say as well. Darren, your team won 4 1, a fantastic performance tonight. Talk me through it. What's your assessment? Well, um, at this point, I think the guys really work hard. Uh, we've been training, really working hard through the off season into now, into this tournament. We still have a lot of work to do. There's a little ins and outs that I think we, we can definitely work on next training session. But otherwise, than that, there, I'm proud of the performance that we performed here tonight. You took the lead and then Mavericks equalized against the runner play and then you were able to, to capitalize and go ahead. What was the thought process in that moment, you know, after surrendering the lead and, you know, what are some of the things that you would have said to the boys to get them back in terms of confidence? Stay in the game, continue to play, press a little higher and we get on the ball as fast as possible. Every first and second ball we try to get so that no matter what we we'll start them from playing, mm -hmm. I keep playing. We saw the high press. Whenever Mavericks got on the ball, it seemed to me that pot that potential had two to three players closing them down. Was yeah. that part of the game strategy? Yeah, that was part of the game plan. Press high, squeeze them, start them from playing the football. Because I did realize that I, they were just playing one dimension all the time, down the line, down the line. So the whole idea was just to cut that out by pressing them. And the Marlington coming over from Paradise, he got two tonight. Um, how impressed were you of his excellent. performance? I mean, he's been working very hard through training. He's an excellent player, a player with a lot of experience. And it's great to have a player of that caliber playing with us right now. It's basically a new team, a lot of new players, but they're, they're now coming together, gelling, and I'm really I'm impressed so far. Going back to the drawing board, what will you do different now for the next match? Well, preparing for the next match, we have some, some things to sharpen it on. So I, I definitely, definitely we'll be doing some work this week. Well, thanks a lot, coach, and right. congratulations again. Right, thanks again. So he said it was a great performance. He's happy with the team, the, the team's display, but he's saying that there's still work to do. So interesting, interesting comments. A lot of the coaches have said that. I know it's early in the competition, but a lot of the coaches have said that they still have a lot of work to do, and I think that that will bode well for the tournament because the coaches know as good as the teams are playing, yeah. we can step up a level, and that will 
obviously bode well for the tournament and bode well for the fans. So let's talk about these women's games um, yeah. on Sunday as well, Sunday evening. Mavericks women, they drew 1-1 with Fitz Village. My good friend Michaela Aline, she got the goal for Mavericks. RF Prime, Daphne Watson James, she got a goal for RF Prime, who beat Technique 2 1. And Kickstart, they beat Pinelands 1 0, thanks to this thumping header from Shante Padmore. Yeah. And you can see her because we're going to show the video here now with her golden locks. So Goldilocks <laughs> had a golden goal against Pinelands. Um, so those are all the games that happened this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And of course, Mr. Rowe, you are going to be involved next week. When is the next time you're going to be coaching, though? Ooh, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I know mm -hmm. um, uh, Arantes will be back, so he'll be he'll be taking taking them back over. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking to work uh, alongside PV as well with the younger the younger age group in mm -hmm. this tournament coming up. Yeah. So it should be. It, it should be pretty soon. <laughs> hope, be pretty hope, soon. Oh, sorry, but for now, I'm I'm working uh, with a few individuals in the yeah. tournament as well because I I do that. That's one of the major things I do. I work with the individuals. So uh, because this this tournament has been kind of sprung upon most of the girls as well, mm -hmm. they they do have a lot of work that they're catching back up. Um, but they they should be ready by the time the crunch time comes yeah. around. Yeah, yeah this tournament's playing for a lot of money, so. $50,000 in all. I yeah. say yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. You have a question how, for how, how challenging is it for you to be coaching and still playing at the same time? I can't imagine how tough that could be. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, definitely because um, school has also started. Yeah. So I, I teach as well. So um, school has started for me in terms of planning and development. So it's, it's time consuming. It's taxing. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I, I coach for the love for the love of football and for, for enjoying seeing people go and reach their potential. Mm -hmm. So I, I know we have a lot of girls who definitely have it in them. So mm -hmm. I'm working very hard to get the best out of them. And then there are some guys as well who are looking to to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Look to get out of college and whatnot. So I'm, I'm working with them as well. And then obviously trying to get myself back in shape. Like I mentioned, I'm working very hard with the physio and you know in the gym and stuff. So I'm, I'm balancing it. I'm mm -hmm. balancing it. That's what life is all about. I, I, I mean, know before, well, the tournament is supposed to end on December 4th. Yeah. But obviously, going into the new year, we know Barbados will be playing in the CONCACAF Nations League. Any chance of mm. Daniel Rowe trying to make that thing? Mm. <laughs> uh, I will try. I'm, <laughs> I'm giving it, I'm giving it, I'm giving it my all. Yeah. Um, I think this is, this is the first time that I've actually been fit since my, since my first half season at Dames. Yeah. Um, I think I had a pretty good season, I just got, like four goals and a few assists. Yeah. And, like, Coming off the bench, a yeah. super sub, as we were call him. Uh, not then, that was <laughs> later <laughs> on, before, yeah. before that I was, I was starting, when I first came in, when um, Ronaldo PV had first, first started game. at yeah, games, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think we finished fourth or fifth in the league yeah, that yeah, season, yeah. Zico Correct. Edmi was top scorer, Correct, yeah. we had Pookie killing it on the left hand side, yeah, 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 yeah. That, was, that, was, that was that Dames team, man, and uh, I, I do think it, if I can recapture that form, honestly, yeah. with the strength and the fitness that I've added now, mm -hmm. I, I think I think I can push for that team. But it's going to be tough because I know there are a lot of very good players, and most of the guys have not stopped training. So you still yeah. have, yeah. You, yeah, you, you, apart from the guys who will have been playing yeah. all this time, you know, national team and training and whatnot, um, we do have uh, a lot of guys who have been putting in a lot of hard work on their own, and I've been seeing it and. Then I've been working with a, a lot of players who, who've been putting work on their own. So you had um, Taggio James, who, yeah. who who just went back to college. You have Jody Green, who's just gone off to, to play. You have a lot of those players who, who I've been working with as well, who honestly, they're, they're the future. The future is at their feet. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm about to be 30. Like, my, oh, my really? time no, is... Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 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 uh, my my time my time is wrapping so up. On borrow time then. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm on borrow time for sure. So honestly, c coaching is taking a taking the foreground mm -hmm. of what I do. Coaching and teaching is all about education. Is all about the next. So on the topic of coach, uh -huh. we're looking for a new national team coach. Who knows? Yeah, is this Daniel putting his? Uh, uh, maybe uh, not now, maybe for the next there 10, year, 10 years from now. Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that a dream hopefully years? Hopefully sooner than 10 years. Um, I, I would definitely 100% be open to, to, to giving it a shot. 
but I do I'm definitely planning to go to England and start getting some some more advanced badges yeah. because ba badges here are hard to come by. Yeah. I know Randy did uh, tell me that that he's planning to to get some in the near future, okay. uh, but I I can't wait for the near future. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I I'm definitely forging ahead and uh, gaining my experience now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that's definitely that's definitely a chance in in, yeah, in the in the future, yeah. So who knows? Rome may soon be in the hot. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Rome might be in the. Uh, <laughs> nah, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> uh, so of of course, football went on this weekend, and we had some brilliant scores. We had some brilliant games, and of course, some brilliant goals as well. Now, before we go and end the show, we have to know who is the player of the week. Now, we have two players of the week. One for the Women's Super League and one for the Men's Republic Cup. What are we talking about in the Republic Cup? Who's taking the Player of the Week this week? Well, we had two players that scored five goals, Nick. Ooh. Yeah. So who from, you decided on? From this is all up to you <laughs> from, from Silver Sands, we had Darian Guilford. He mm -hmm. scored five versus Eastern. And then the player from the Barbados Soccer Academy, Mr. Corey Hoyt, scored five versus Huddersfield turning mm -hmm. but I think we're gonna have to go with Corey Hoyt he okay. scored all five goals in that match so I think it's only fair that yeah. Mr. Corey Hoyt congratulations to you sir mm -hmm. you are the player of the week for, and the, for the women's mm -hmm. now you you will make that determination I'll, uh, I'll lay that yeah for the women uh <laughs> well, somebody complained that we didn't have a women's player of the week last week we listen and um Yes, we listened, we listened, of course. Yes. We like to please the fans. Of course. Um, last week, we didn't have one, but I think last week, four goals from Tiana Bino would have gotten her the player of the week. And now this week, she assisted the winner for Shante Padmore to head home for a kickstart in their victory over Pineland. So just by that process, we're going to give it to Tiana Bino. So Tiana Bino is the women's player of the week and anybody has a problem with that you can uh, give me a shout <laughs> so guys thanks so much for being here thanks so much um chubby tenko they call him uh, chubby he's not that chubby but um thank you so much mr daniel Rowe, for being here with your beautiful ajax jersey i forget one of those as well and thank yeah. you mr goodrich boys for uh your expertise and your analysis as usual my name is nick maitland thank you for joining us on this episode of nation news touchline report we'll see you next time